Hello, George Romanich here. Today, I'm going to teach you how to make unit vectors. So next, let's say Sunday afternoon, you don't have any plans, you don't know what to do. You can always stay at home and make unit vectors. Let's see how to do that. I will start here by plotting a generic vector A. This vector has magnitude, has tail and has head. Now let's say that a fellow comes to us and says, can you write this vector without this arrow? Can you write vector A so that I can see magnitude as well as direction? And I can say yes. And that would be the following. A vector is equal magnitude of this vector, which I will just call A without this arrow. So that's magnitude, and now I need to give direction. And direction is given by unit vector E. I will put kappa. That means unit vector. And that unit vector E has this direction and magnitude 1. It has magnitude 1 because when multiply with this, it has to give exact length that correspond to this vector A. Unit vector in this case tells us that the vector A is on this path, or in other words, it has this orientation, and it has this sense given with the arrow of unit vector E. So here it is very important to realize that the intensity of this unit vector E is 1. Regardless of the units that we are using in the definition of uh, vector A over here, those units, if any, are contained in the magnitude. And we saw the same thing in the previous video when I talked about these things in Cartesian coordinate systems. Therefore, the significance of unit vector is not in magnitude, but actually it provides the direction for this vector A. Well, from here, we can immediately see that any unit vector can be made as vector divided by vector's magnitude. Well, I guess apostrophe should be here, but doesn't matter. Therefore, in this case, unit vector would be A as a vector divided by magnitude of this vector A. And that is how we create any unit vector whatsoever. We take vector, we divide with the magnitude, and the only thing that remains is vector with unit length that contains the orientation and sense of vector A. And what I just said is very, very important. Namely, the importance of unit vectors is not in magnitude, but they provide orientation and sense for a generic vector A, B, C, or whatever. Let me demonstrate this further in the case of Newton's law of gravity. I have two objects. Let's say this one has mass m1, and this one, a little bit bigger, has mass m2. The distance between their center of gravity is r. We know from my video on uh, Newton's law of gravity that the force between these two objects is g m1 m2 divided by r squared. However, this is magnitude of that force. How can we write this in a vector form? To get this in a vector form, we need to introduce some vectors over here. So first of all, I will call this vector this distance, I will make it a vector, and I will call it r1, 2. And r1, 2 means distance from object 1 to object 2. That's the meaning of these subscripts. So distance from object 1 to object 2. Force of gravity is always attractive. So therefore, there is force on this object M2, like so. And I will call this force F21. 
F21 is force on object 2 by object 1. That's the meaning of these subscripts. Well, how can we now rewrite this in a vector form? To do that, I need to make unit vector out of this R12. But I know how to make unit vectors. I just defined it here. So let's do it. R12 kappa, and that will mean unit vector, is equal this vector R12 divided R12, where R12 without vector is intensity. Now I can go ahead and write this in vector form, namely force F21 is equal magnitude that stays the same g m1 m2 r 1 2 squared times this unit vector r 1 2 kappa but notice this is vector r 1 2 kappa Notice that the force is in the opposite direction of this vector, so I have to put here minus. And this is usually how you see Newton's law of gravity in vector form. Now, when you properly understand how to make these unit vectors, we can write this same great law in the following form. F21 is equal minus G M1 M2 over, look at this now, this is important. Instead of R12 kappa, I will write this. So that is R12 vector. Here I have R12 squared, and this one will give to the power of three. And this is another way to write Newton's law of gravity. When I first time, to be honest with you, when I first saw this, I didn't understand why is there power 3 over here. But then later when I understood how to make unit vectors, I see now that one of these R12 comes from the definition of unit vector, so there is no problem. Everything is correct. In other words, if you write Newton's law of gravity in this form, that is like closing engine of a car and car is just running. If you write it in this way, then you open the hood and you can actually see the engine and understand how it works thanks to the way we construct unit vectors. Boy, this was really good analogy. huh? Third Newton's law tells us that F12 is minus F21. And everything fits correctly because F12 would be force on 1 by 2 and that would be minus this and minus and minus gives plus and that is correct because it would be in the same direction as R12. So our vector notation and the rule to make unit vectors work. This video deepens your understanding on unit vectors, teaches you how to make unit vectors on Sunday afternoon, and uh, connects everything with the great and powerful Newton's law of gravity. Until next video, goodbye.